Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll free 1 800 610 7035. My email address, X Zone at X Zone Radio TV.com. On all social media sites, X Zone Radio TV. And our main radio website where you can listen to the X Zone Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. until midnight is www.exoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Rick Hayes. He is the founder of Life Gift Incorporated, an association that supports his consultation and speaking engagement services. As a psychic medium and a life consultant with very unique abilities, Rick consults on a daily basis with those that have questions on life and the afterlife. Uh, Rick is the published author of Stepping Stones, Thoughts Along Life's Path, and You're Not Crazy, You Have a Ghost. Joining me now is Rick Hayes, and Rick, welcome back to the X-Zone. Well, it's a pleasure, Rob McConnell. It, 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 uh, it's great to be back and return to the zone. My good friend, how have you been since you and I last talked? I have been. It's been a uh, phenomenal, phenomenal year. I'm looking forward to next year. And, uh, you know, part a part of my year is, is to be on your show and, and I always look forward to it every year. Oh, you're a good friend, Rick. You and I have had the pleasure of chatting many times over the years. And um, with the way the world is today, I, I keep asking my guests this question, especially those who are as talented and is in tune with what is going on in the world today as yourself. When will this all come to um, a, a happy resolution, Rick? We've got what's happening in the Middle East. We have what's happening off the coast of China. We have what's happening now in uh, in, in the Middle East with ISIS and uh, you know Russia. It's going nuts. It's it's uh, you know it's an ongoing learning experience here on this earth, and uh, you know as long as we have a diversification of thoughts and ideas. Mm-hmm. It's going to continue. Uh, you know, having different, diverse thoughts and ideas is is an essential part of life. You grow from it. You learn from it. But you know, the the key element here is that you know, with the beliefs also comes uh, uh-huh. sometimes some chaos, and so that's what's going on in the world. I I tend to shun Rob. You know me. I I'm, I believe in living positive each and every day, and yep. I tend to shun to shun looking at those those negative vibes that are happening in this world today but at the same time all we can do is as an individual is to live life each positive each day and and to send those positive energies out there but rick when you're communicating with the other side are, are they showing any concern about what's happening in the world today well there's there's a concern not just in in life here in the physical realm but also in the spiritual realm as well because you know they're now in a, in a they're in a now in a, a living I call life continual part uh, where there is no chaos. There is they do not have the chaos and little and the chaotic experiences we have here. But so at the same time, sure, you know we would all want to live in peace and live in harmony. But again, being that we are given the gift mm-hmm. of choices on this earth, we're also given with those choices comes a diverse beliefs. By the way, I want to just interject here for a moment. Did I hear 25 years on the network, my Tw- friend? 25 years doing this show. Congrats. My Lord. Congratulations. No one, no, and, and you still look 31. I don't understand oh. that. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> Rick, Rick, I, I, hate, I hate to say this, friend, but I think it's time you got some good glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I I can see very well with my spiritual eyes, but my my, my earthly eyes are kind of just starting to deteriorate. Uh, deteriorate. Okay, you're okay. We're going to say this: you're 35. Let's just let's just say that. Uh, bless you, world, my friend. Bless you, my friend. <laughs> Rick, for the for the listeners who may be hearing 
you for the first time because we have so many new uh, stations and networks and affiliates uh, around the world. Tell us, tell them a little bit about yourself. What was it that started you on this very important mission that you are on? Well, and and it is a uh, it, it's a purpose, it, and we all have a purpose in life, and it's a purpose that you know that took me some time in my life in my lifetime to uh, acknowledge and to understand these abilities that were was given at birth. I feel we all have given many gifts and abilities when we're created. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really, uh, really share them in the, to the public until about, we, wow, it's, and I know I've been on your show for several years now, but it's been 14 years for me uh, being, in, being in the public and sharing with everyone. Yeah. And so, you know, and it all began with, as you, as you and I shared for the first time years ago, it all began with an individual. I kept these abilities to myself because I didn't want everybody to think I was different. I was mm-hmm. weird. And so up until 14 years ago, I had an experience in my life. And, and briefly, basically what mm-hmm. happened was I was told for the abilities I was given and for what I shared, uh, I was being very selfish. And it made a lot of sense to me because if you have a talent or a skill or a gift, you should share it with others. And so 14 years ago, I began sharing it with others and the last 14 years and it continues to be a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, life, life path for me. Rick, what is the difference between a psychic, a medium, and a life consultant? Well, I've been I've been titled all three in, mm-hmm. in the media in the last couple of years, and and I just share with everyone when they ask me what my title is, it really doesn't matter. I'm mm-hmm. just me. Just call me to dinner. That's the only title I really <laughs> want. So, but <laughs> but uh, a psychic is defined in, in in the mainstream as someone who can see along the path of one's future. Uh, prominently, predominantly through uh, through uh, sight or through insight or through intuitive abilities. Uh, I, I I have that ability. It is just a part of the overall ability I've been given. Uh, but at the same time, when I share with everyone that just when a psychic shares with you that this is going to happen to you in your future, that doesn't mean it's going to happen because I go back to mm-hmm. Rob to where I share with everyone with the gift of choice you're given. You're also given that with that gift of choice to change, to adjust, to redirect that path. So uh, it's an observation. So a medium is someone that that again with like what I what I've been doing all my life is seeing those and hearing those and acknowledging those that have completed this part of their life, the earthly physical body part of their life, and transcended into a body of spirit and and continuing in life continual. And then, of course, the life consultant is something that, that I've uh, attached to my nameplate, I guess, on my desk. And that is someone I, I realized, Rob, for doing this for several years, I was having those individuals that was, you know, receiving comfort from their loved ones and spirit around mm-hmm. them. But I was also seeing that they were, you know, struggling with their life each day. And so as a life consultant, my I believe that before you can understand the life after the life and spirit, you got to understand the value of life daily here on this physical realm. So a uh, life consultant is basically a, a, a guide, a, an advisor, a, a rec, someone that recommends and maybe gives you some tools, some insight to, to use. Rick, what do, you, uh, cont- uh, what do you attribute the current growth, a phenomenal growth, when it comes to new age spirituality? Yes, it's. Uh, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I, I really do. I, I've, I, as I shared, I've been, you know, really been mm-hmm. in the mainstream of this industry for the last fourteen years. I, my personally, I've seen a tremendous growth in the last fourteen years. Uh, I, I really feel it's because we have grown in life in years ago to just follow a traditional realm, a traditional belief based on your upbringing, your environment. And so, but the last few years, especially the young adults, they're wanting to learn. They're, they're, they have a yearning to learn yeah. about life. And, and so with that, we're becoming more open-minded and saying, you know, it, it we, we kind of want to look at it this way where maybe this belief is something, there's something to this belief. Maybe there is something to the spiritual realm. Maybe there's something to the just living life here each day. And, and to, I think we ought to give you know accommodations to the to the individuals that are on this earth today because they're becoming open minded about 
to being open-minded about what may be. You receive messages from the other side, Rick. How do you do that? How does how does a spirit know that you, Rick Hayes, has the ability to get their message across to this side? Well, I, I, well, I sleep very little, Rob. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> No, first of all, how, how I receive them mm-hmm. is basically it, it, it's a process. Uh, I feel like our loved ones and spirit are around us. Uh, they're around us all the time because they're helping us in our life and guiding us, especially those. I tend to connect most mostly with the family. It makes sense to me who who's going to be around you and helping you in your life and guiding your life. It's going to be those who care about you and love you, and it's going to be the family connection. But I begin by, by feeling their presence. It, it's what I share is that if someone walks into a room and you're, and you're uh, sitting in your favorite recliner and half, half nodding off and maybe taking, starting to fall asleep a little bit, and someone knows this and they walk into your, the room, you get the feeling someone came into the room, even if your eyes are closed, and, and I get the same feeling. And then it goes to into where I will acknowledge their presence by I've been given the ability to see them. And I see them in different ways. The most common way is a, an elongated light, very bright in the center. I've been asked, Rob, if that is our body of spirit. I don't know. But I do know when I see them, it is an acknowledgement of presence. Uh, and another way is I hear them as well. I, I will hear them through. Uh, keep in mind, they're no longer in the physical body, so they're no longer speaking with the physical voice. So with that being said, it, it is a transfer of energy. It's an energy of thought. And and they transfer the, the, their, their messages back to me and back and forth to me. I give this example. If you're sitting, go back to sitting at home and you're sitting at home and and you're sitting there and you're watching your favorite show and all of a sudden you think of it, you think of a friend and you think I ought to give my friend a call real quick why why the commercial's on right and all of a sudden all of a sudden the phone rings and when the phone rings it's your friend you've had a transfer in energy of thought you thought of that individual they received that message in in a in, in an energy form and they, that's then they respond with they call to you so so that's that's how I that's how I uh, I acknowledge them. I share the messages, and then I and then we receive the validations. A big topic these days, Rick, around um, the co- the water cooler and in many corporate board offices, I'm told is the subject of death. It seems that more and more people mm-hmm. are opening up to the to the secret well it's not a secret anymore but people like you and other guests that we've had here on the show have been telling us over the years that death is not the end what do you say happens to us having worked with both sides of the death syndrome so to speak how do you explain what happens well, first of all, and I think I shared with you this you, a little secret about me several years ago on the show. I've never in my in my life here on this earth have ever been afraid of death because, for, you know, just not so much the abilities I was given, but just the, just having that feeling that we don't we don't end. And but I've shared with you the secret how scared I am of snakes. <laughs> you know, so uh, you know I, I'm not afraid of death. I am I am ter- terrified of snakes. So. So that's one of my little secrets. But, you know, death, if you look up the word death, death, it, the definition means an end. It means an end to something. And with the abilities I've been given, I know that we do not end. We simply, we go into another part of life, and it is a life continual. And the way it, I have been shared it happens is simply that the physical body is a body for us to walk on this earth, to learn life, to grow in life, to experience life. It's, it's a, it's a vehicle. And then once we leave this vehicle and we complete this part of our life, we simply transcend into our, our next body, which is the body of spirit. And we continue on in life and life is a continual. And so, you know, I, I just don't believe that we, I believe the body, the physical body is complete and we, in a sense, end with that physical body. But the, but the life, of us will never won't will not end. We continue to go on. Mm. Tell tell me, Rick. Uh, you've been on on a number of radio shows. You've been on television. Um, when you go to to do a shoot a program at a haunted place, 
What do you do to protect yourself? Well, well, I've been very busy in, I, in the last, in the, just in the last few weeks. I've been in uh, a in a, in a residence, uh, an historic residence that has a lot of what they would call haunted activity. Uh, I also have been in an abandoned hospital in the last few weeks and uh it's been about seven seven and a half hours in, a, in an abandoned hospital I wasn't even sick rob i was just there <laughs> oh i thought i but, thought uh, yeah, i thought maybe something was wrong and that's how long it took you to see a doctor <laughs> yeah i've got my medical medicaid card <laughs> <laughs> so but you no, know, when I go to those places, I, you know, and, I, and you're right, I've been, I've been about every place you've seen on television. Yeah. I have I had the opportunity to, to be there, but I, I simply share when I when I approach the location and the individuals are there. I just share with them I have brought my Fantastic Four with them, and you know they automatically look for a, for a briefcase or a vest with a lot of pockets. Uh-huh. But my Fantastic Four is simply this: when I go into these locations. Number one, I'm going in with a positive attitude and a positive energy because positive overcomes negative every time. Number two, I'm going to go in with with the understanding that I am in control. I feel that we give what what I define as negative energies too much strength by by allowing them to give us give them the control. We have the control. So when I go into location, I know and I make it make a stand that I'm in control. The third is that I have a creator more powerful than anything. So I know that I have that have that that power mm-hmm. with me. And and the last, and it's kind of a humorous statement, but in a sense, it, it is a reality. When I go into these locations, I've got family that's moved on. And Rob, you don't mess with my family. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit of the Italian in it, you know, and, and a little bit of that side, but. But uh, that's that's what and and really, if if everyone would go in with those into these locations with that mindset, they would find actually you will find you will receive a lot more validations, a lot more activity to to help you learn about the location. Exonation. My guest this hour is Rick Hayes. His website is www.lifesgift.com. You can find him on Facebook as well at forward slash Rick Hayes Life's Gift. So why are some spirits trapped on this side, Rick, and others get to go to the light? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, and again, I, I just share with everyone, I'm Rick Hayes, and, you know, I'm just going to follow what I feel. And in this industry, you know, we got a show on, on the network, on the national networks now that is showing up. And they're great guys. Uh, you know, they're just super guys. But they are now uh, sharing that they're able to trap a ghost. And I shared this with a good friend uh, years ago. Um, she's since moved on, but she was in this industry as well. And, and I've shared with her that, you know, that if you, if you see a, a spirit or if you see, you know, like you see on television where the shadow, these shadow figures and these spiritual mm-hmm. shadow figures are walking through walls, well, if they can walk through walls, how are they going to be trapped? So, you know, it, I, I, a spirit is not trapped. I don't feel they can be trapped because we have a mindset to believe, Rob, that that because our physical body can be restricted, is basically restricted. We can only be in one place at one time. But a, but a spiritual body is non-restricted. It is not restricted at all. It can be anywhere that it chooses to be. So when when someone shares with me that this individual this spirit individual is trapped here and they can't get get out, I look mm-hmm. at them and say, "But you just saw them walk through a wall." So you know you, you need to understand they're choosing to be at this location. I believe primarily because they want us to understand maybe what they went through in their life here, maybe what they experienced here, maybe they want us to understand and learn from them there. Because who better to for for you to learn? about a location than those who they had the experience and memories of being there. So, you know, that to me is, is the majority of the time when, in, when a, a spirit is constantly being in a location, I don't feel like they're trapped there because they can be in where they want to be. They just simply are saying, I'm here because you're here and you want to know about this place. Rick, you mentioned uh, a reality TV show very briefly as, as someone who has been in this, 
profession for a number of years. Do you find that the so-called reality TV shows are a help to the industry or a hindrance? Well, in a sense, Rob, they, they have really helped. We, talk, we spoke earlier about how the, 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 the concept and the thoughts and the ideas of spirituality is becoming more open to mm-hmm. individuals. I think a lot, we can commend a lot of the, the television show that's on that's been on and been on for several years that have allowed us to open our thoughts and our ideas and our thoughts. So, you know, with that being said, I do believe it's, it's been an asset for certain types, certain shows to be on to help us to, to open our minds. Right. But at the same time, and I say this a lot, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, on especially on television, you know, fear, uh, negative sells tickets. <laughs> and so... You know, the, and sell the ratings. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I do feel like, in a sense, it's been a hindrance because a lot of these shows on and becoming more and more of these today, they're going toward the negative realm than they are toward the positive realm of this. And I, I personally, I feel like this will go on for a certain amount of time. I think we'll also start seeing a shift in, in that as well. I think we'll start seeing a shift toward a more positive light in the spirit, in the spiritual television. Ricky, I have a program that's called Life's Directions. Now, what exactly does that program do, Rick? Well, it's a program I began, actually, uh, it's, it's a fairly new program. I began it about a year and a half ago. And the reason is, is because, as I shared earlier, uh, do, being, having the private consultations and uh, having those individuals come in and to connect and, and to, to share and connect with their mm-hmm. loved ones in what, I, what would be defined as spirit, it brought comfort to them to know that life is continual and the validation that only they would know that they are valid, validation. But I also saw, Rob, in the consultations, especially toward the end of a session, I was noticing these individuals were asking questions such as, Rick, uh, I'm struggling in my marriage, or Rick, I am, uh, I can't find, my, what is my purpose in my life? Or Rick, I, I, I don't feel like I'm in the job I'm supposed to be in. And so for about four and a half years, I started studying and learning from top life coaches in the field, mm-hmm. and, I, and I learned from them, and I developed a life directions program by taking what I learned and also applying some of the cool tools and concepts that I believe in, plus having the abilities that also guided me as well. But basically, it's a 90-day program, and the key concept is, of this is there are eight elements in a person's life, and the key is to get those elements balanced. These elements are, for example, are, are your career element, your enjoyment life element, your spiritual element, and to work for 90 days to balance to, be, to bring a balance to your life because once you begin to redirect and once you begin to refocus you and you will start receiving a purpose path and and it starts balancing your life and you start you will start acknowledging and I, I've got testimonials already where individuals have have actually basically became more balanced in their life mm-hmm. and with with intentions out there things started manifesting for them. And it made their life happier because I, I said this in one of my books, before you can understand the, the life after, you must first understand the tremendous value of life daily. And that's what the purpose is, is of that program. Rick, stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exo Nation, our guest this hour is Rick Hayes, www.lifesgift.com. And on Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash Rick Hayes Life's Gift. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send an email, if you have a guest suggestion, if you'd like to ask us a question, Exxon at TV.com. And of course, you can listen to the Exxon 24-7-365 at www.exxoneradiotv.com. Rick Hayes and I return on the other side of this break. Don't go away. You're 
You're listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. In the world today, most people want what is called the American dream. They want love, a family, a fancy car, and a nice home in a nice neighborhood. They also want a good job and money to travel to interesting places. Life is great because they have the American dream. But what happens to this dream if they hear they have a devastating illness like lung cancer? The doctor may tell them they need treatment immediately or they will be dead in six months. He tells them you need surgery and then you need chemotherapy to get better. When they get home, they think of many unanswered questions. They ask themselves, will I survive when so many of my friends with cancer have died? How will I deal with the pain, hair loss, nausea and vomiting, sore mouth and other side effects of chemotherapy and pain of surgery? Will I be able to keep on working? What will happen to my family? Then they look at the internet and wonder, is there a better way to deal with lung cancer and return to my American dream? Carl Helvey can tell you, yes, there is a better way. Carl Helvey is a registered nurse with a doctorate in public health and a 38-year lung cancer survivor. Carl was given six months to live when diagnosed, and he refused chemotherapy and surgery. Carl used alternative interventions. Those not only helped him overcome lung cancer, but also to remain cancer-free and healthy for over the past 36 years since recovery. In his book, You Can Beat Cancer Using Alternative Integrative Interventions, Dr. Helvey will tell you his story of using all natural treatments for lung cancer and continuing to work during his treatment. Free of pain and discomfort, Carl will also share how he remained cancer and disease-free since then without chronic illnesses or prescribed medications. His story is supplemented with chapters by Dr. Bernie Siegel, Dr. Francesco Contreras, and Dr. James Forsyth, alternative integrative physicians, and Dr. Kim Dalzell and Tanya Harder-Pierce, health professionals, all have successfully helped others overcome cancer. Research presented by the alternative physicians on their treatments for lung cancer demonstrate a significantly higher long-term survival rate for lung cancer clients than those obtained by conventional doctors. In addition, their clients were free of or had reduced side effects. You can beat lung cancer using alternative integrative interventions by Dr. Carl Helvey is now available at all major book outlets and at www.beatlungcancer.net. That's www.beatlungcancer.net. This information may help you return to the American dream. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. The ability to access the knowledge of the universe is much easier for us to access than we may believe. Brad Johnson, Conscious Matrix Communicator, is one of these unique individuals who is able to access a strong connection to the universal mind. Through his connection, Brad has assisted thousands of clients from all over the world through natural intuitive assistance. 
The intuitive information received is vast, covering a wide range of subjects. Brad's innate ability includes being able to access one's own universal matrix to help them realize their potential to create a life of profound greatness. One-on-one -on -one private sessions with Brad Johnson are available to anyone from around the world. Brad is also a proficiently trained psychic, Akashic Records reader, an online spiritual teacher, founder of his own unique and powerful healing system, Body Regeneration Healing, as well as a professional conscious channeler in communication with his own higher self-consciousness known as Adronis. For more information or to book a service appointment with Brad Johnson, visit his website at www.consciousmatrix.com. That's www.consciousmatrix.com. Listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. everyone as you know that is the theme music for the Exxon TV show we are going to be starting on season two in the very near future and I want to thank all of the Exxon nation around the world who have sent us in so many wonderful emails after watching the the clips that we have available at www.exxonetv.com Rick Hayes is our special guest to this hour www.lifesgift.com and you can reach uh, Rick on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Rick Hayes Life Gift and on Twitter at Life Life's Gift One. Rick, um, what what are the kind of questions that people are asking you these days uh, when they sit down to you as a as a medium to communicate with the other side, are the questions changing? Are is have you seen a shift in the paradigm? I haven't. I haven't a sense. But first of all, it, uh, I wanted to share this. Did you notice, Rob, that I'm becoming a social media maniac now? I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all that. Did you notice that? You know, I'm proud of you, buddy, because <laughs> the work you the work, you, the, work you, the work you you do, Rick, has to get out there, and I'm so happy to see you doing that. Yeah. Well, thank you, but at the same time, you know, I'm usually told that when something happens on my computer, just stand back and don't touch it. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that shares my uh, technology gift right there. So, But, yeah, I have seen a, a slight shift in, in, uh, in the questions asked. Uh, again, I, when, in my private consultations, mm -hmm. I do not – I'm not one that where someone would come in and say, I would immediately ask what questions do you have or who do you want me to – quote channel or contact i i feel like our loved ones are around us and i i just share with them that i'm going to let them come to visit with us and as we begin i will listen to those in spirit that are around us and they start giving me the validation to who they are but the questions i do have you know when i do consultations private mm -hmm. consultations or if i'm at events or speaking to parents i'm finding a lot of individuals robert coming up and and they're they're really they're wanting to know learn more about their own abilities and what can what can they do to enhance their own abilities or what can they do to to acknowledge maybe their loved one that's around them more. I'm seeing that more, and I think that goes back to what we was talking about earlier, where we're seeing a shift in people becoming more open minded and saying, "Hey, you know, Rick Rick has has got connected with his abilities. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can do the same thing. Maybe I have the same things, and I've." I just simply been blocking them all these years. So, you know, to, to answer the question, I think the biggest shift in, in the paradigm has been just simply that individuals are wanting to know, how can I get more connected, not just with life here, but with those that are in the body of spirit? Well, how can people get more connected, Rick? Uh, you know, are there courses they can take or do, or do we have the ability built within each and every one of us, but we just don't know how to trigger it yet? 
Well, you know, there's courses out there. I mean, every day there's new courses coming out mm-hmm. and, you know, sharing. This is how you can, can learn how you can get your own abilities to, to go into second gear, basically. But, and, you know, I respect those, but I truly believe that, as I shared earlier, that when we're created, one of the gifts we're given is the gift of, of the ability to know there is more than just life here, to acknowledge and, and to acknowledge them and to accept them. And But as we're growing up, we're told it's a coincidence. We're told it's imagination. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're told you guys, you see it and, and, and touch it to believe it. And so we begin blocking the abil- abilities we have inside us. And, you know, the key is just to start evolving them again. What is actually still within you? That's why I share, Rob, if you have young children, little children, and, and I know this because I have had personal experience as a child myself. You know, if you have little children that are sharing, that they're, you know, they're, they have, uh, they're playing with an imaginary friend yeah. that we would define as an imaginary friend in the room, or if they're saying, you know, mommy, grandpa's standing right next to you, or, or grandmother told me, or my grandma told me this, then it's because they simply have accepted that the young children, what I call pure spirit, yeah. they accept what is around them, and they haven't been told it to not believe it. Yet and so, but as we're growing up, we start again. We start blocking, and so you know that the what you can do is is to to be patient, to acknowledge what's around you, and to allow what you've already given inside you to develop. Is there courses out there that can help you? Absolutely. I, you know, the knowledge is mm-hmm. knowledge is always is always a, a seed to grow with. But as I share in in the workshops that I did a few years ago. The key is to be yourself and don't try to copy someone. Don't try to be like someone else. Just be yourself and follow what you feel within. You know, uh, our, our youngest daughter used to play with imaginary friends and we always, uh, we encouraged it. You know, we didn't, we didn't poofoo it. We didn't say, you know, it's all your magic. We encouraged it. And uh, my daughter, our daughter is, is very intuitive and very empathic these days. You know, she's 25 years old. She has her own family now. And our grandson would come to us and talk to us about angels. And once again, we did not discourage him. We always encouraged to keep that, that pureness going. And, and it's so sad to see parents thinking that the child is, is just, Using he has an over overactive imagination. No, he doesn't have an overactive imagination. He has a pure imagination, and we in society, Rick, we screw things up so bad for kids because you know we 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 when they're born and as they're growing up, we teach them about Santa Claus, the uh, let me see Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, the Sandman, and the, and the list goes on and on and on. Then when they get into the the area where they can kind of start learning. We teach them about a cow that jumps over a moon, the spoon that runs away, the, the dish that runs away with a spoon. We also teach them about this lady who lives in a shoe with all her kids. And then we get them into school and, and we teach them all these strange stories about this animal says that, that animal says this, da 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 And then by the time they're in grade two, what do we do? We pull out the carpet from under their feet and say, we we no, that's not true. No, 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 that's not true at all. You know, these poor kids. And, uh, yeah, and and, and, I, and I, what I've noticed, we talked about it. Have I seen? Have I personally seen the paradigm shift? Yeah. When I speak in school, and I call them their fu- our future generation, because right. our, the young adults in school, that's exactly what they are. And I have noticed in when I speak in the schools to these young adults, mm-hmm. the, our future generation, they are they are almost like embracing. They're almost craving yeah. and wanting to know. I will go in and speak it as a motivational speaker and talk about follow your path. And when a door of opportunity opens up for you to walk through that door and because it's open for a reason, it's guiding yeah. your path. And I will talk about that. And before I can use every time before I can get very far into my talk, they were raising their hands and they're saying, but Rick, tell us about your abilities. Tell us about those in spirit around us. They are, they are craving it. They're, they're, they're almost like we want to know more about this. And I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. And you're absolutely right. I mean, one of the key things a parent can do with a child 
is that if if they if you you have a young child and they come up to you and they they start sharing with you there's a there's a man in my room or there's a there's a monster in my mm-hmm. room or there's there's a little boy in my room you know it's not just to not just look at them and just say go back to bed you're just having a nightmare having a dream listen to your child that's a key that you can do and and I love what you said with you did with your daughter because that helped her to elevate herself and elevate her confidence and elevate and release, remove any fear that she has of this. And that's what parents can do. And, but at the same time, I also recommend to parents, you know, when you, when your child is showing these abilities and they're, they're sharing with you these, these entities they're saying, they're saying, don't, don't just because you're watching all these ghost hunting shows, don't go immediately to the child and say, do you see a ghost? What do you see around you? You know, you don't want to go, you don't want to push them. But you just let you, the key a parent can do is listen and give them the, the understanding that they have confidence in them. What do you do, Rick, if you think you've got a ghost in your house? Uh, first of all, you ask for rent money. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, which, by the way, in my home, uh, I would I'd be collecting a lot of rent. But <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, what I usually share if you feel if you feel you have uh, someone in your home mm-hmm. as is, is what we would define as a spirit. First of all, you don't want to be frightened because, again, as I've been sharing throughout the evening, that a lot of the times our loved ones are around us to help us in our life. Now, if you're in a lo- in a home that you know, that has an historic location, is a mm-hmm. historic location or it's an older home. Just think about this. The older your home is, the more memories and experiences it has, it has been created in that home. So you're not the only owner in that home. So there's someone who has chosen to remain in that home because they, they may have cherished the home. They may have built the home. So the first thing you can do is if you actually not is to acknowledge them. If you have a, uh, if you have a, what I call a physical sign, or if you have, uh, if you hear something, or if you actually see a shadow, you know, to acknowledge it. Don't don't shun it. Acknowledge it. And then the next thing is begin to understand. You know, and that's the key too is to research your home, research the history of your home, get to know more about your home, get to know more about the location of your home, and and because the more you understand, the less fear you will have because you have a better understanding. And and it's, and research, continue to research, and then just simply, you know, just either you can either accept them, mm-hmm. or you can say, okay, this is my home now. My name's on the mortgage, so I, I if politely and respectfully, I ask you to leave. And that's that's all you have to do if you if you choose not to not to be uh, around some any active any active residents. But what happens, Rick, if the ghost doesn't want to go and it decides that, hey, you want to push? I'll give you a shove. You you fill out a mortgage contract and decide it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, <laughs> no. I, you know, if, if they if they do not, then you got to then start that. You start reasoning. Mm-hmm. Why are they not wanting to leave? Is there something want, they want us to understand? Or, for example, if if uh, if if they had a home that was filled with with children and filled with family and a family life, and they and they really love this home, and maybe maybe you are not being uh, maybe you're not being as proud and, and cherishing the home as much as they are, so they're refusing to leave because they're simply saying we want you to really understand what this home is. But again, there may be other reasons as well. There may be a reason of that they are wanting to direct you, give you a message. Mm-hmm. Are there simply, if you've got one that's really stubborn, you can, again, it goes back to you need to understand who has the control. You, you just simply, and I've done this many times in residences, you just say, we understand you. We received your messages. Now there's absolutely no reason for you to be here because they own the whole thing. And by being respectful to them, they, they will be respectful to you. Rick, do you, uh, there seems to be a difference between the type of, programming that's on the so-called reality TV shows and the Hollywood um, blockbusters. For example, The Exorcist, the Amityville case. Are, are they true to life or are these just just Hollywood? Well, it, it's a mixture. It's a combination. <laughs> 
you know, I, I just had some dear friends that uh, actually did a live uh, show at the home where the actual ex- exorcist occurred. And, uh, you know, did they did they create some things for the show? Any show will do that, you know. But at the same time, these friends of mine that were there, I know them. I know that how honorable and how respectful they are. So, uh, but Hollywood will step in at times and say, you know, we need to do this to to create a uh, higher rating. But uh, things like the Amityville, things like uh, you know, uh, The Exorcist, those are documented cases. And are, are they real? I I really believe they are. I really believe there are negative energies around. This, on this earth and I do believe these occurrences have have occurred and you know why they occurred is mm-hmm. is there's different reasons behind that but I do I do believe there's some validity to that but at the same time and I let and you and I spoke about this before Hollywood loves to uh, to, to create a little more hype for it so <laughs> now Rick um, is there is is there are the possibility that a lot of people who are getting into ghost hunting, and I don't know why they call it ghost hunting. Like, you know, when you hunt something, you yeah. kill it. The ghost is already dead, folks, so find a new name. <laughs> is, is there a chance, Rick, because of their, their lack of experience, their lack of respect, or their lack of understanding what the mechanism behind the entire scenario was that they could actually be bringing danger on top uh, onto themselves. They actually could. I mean, uh, one of the things that I, I, I going, we're working on next year is working with different paranormal groups in different areas and doing some filming with them. And, and you know, the, the, but the, the paranormal, they're reputable, just like in any industry, uh, Rob, there's, there's those reputable, Paranormal groups that are that are you know following a a respectful system, and then there are those who have watched a couple of shows, you know, my buddy shows Zach Zach show and and Jason show, and they say, oh, that was fun. Let's get a black T-shirt, get a couple of these equipments, and wear the lights and blink, and let's call us yeah. call ourselves ghost hunters without any research, without any background of of experience and. You know, the key to investigating, and I'll say this, the key to investigating is to respect. You, it, respect is, is is something that you've got to have. You've got to have respect for the residents. you got a uh, location you're going to. you got to have respect for, for what you're doing. you got to have respect for those that are in the body of the spirit. But when so, push comes yeah, to it, shove, I'm sorry, Rick, when push comes to shove, yeah. what are they trying to accomplish with all these different uh, paranormal uh, groups, all these different ghost hunting uh, organizations. Uh, what are they trying to prove? It's, it's. Well, I feel, and again, I, w- I will say this. I, I really want to commend the, the the paranormal investigators out there and paranormal researchers out there because, again, it goes back to our, the the our mindset in growing in life is. Again, goes back to it's. It's you got to see it. It's got to have concrete. You got to see it. You got to touch it. And then once you once science says all this is 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 occurred and this is validated, then we start believing it. And I share with paranormal investigators. You know, all the equipment that continues to come out. It's just it's just amazing. To but me. but what are they and, trying to prove? Like, what's their goal? What the- <laughs> You know, it seems like, it, all right, do you remember in the 60s they used to have the, the CB clubs and all? everybody would get into yeah. a parking lot with a CB, drink coffee? And, is, and, get your, and, you, and you had your handle. Right. You know, <laughs> this is what yeah. I see what, what, what the majority of these so-called uh, researchers are. They're no more researchers than I am a potato farmer, for God's sake. So what are they <laughs> trying to prove? Yeah. Are they just trying to fit somewhere in society because they can't fit anywhere else that they decide to become a ghost hunter because it's a cool thing to do and they but they don't know what the hell they're doing? Well, that and that's right. The part of it is that the, the popularity of something, mm-hmm. just like in any in anything that becomes popular, everyone says this looks exciting. This looks like something that that I'd have an interest in, and they jump right into it without. But what are they trying to prove? I think yeah. they're trying to prove to themselves. Because a lot of them will share with me that 
Yeah. Well, they are skeptical. A lot of them are skeptical. A lot of them are trying to prove not just to, to themselves, but to others that there's more than just life here. And to me, that's what they're basically trying to prove. They're trying to prove to themselves, hey, you know, there must there's there must be what we call spirits around us because this this equipment blinked, and there's no valid reason why it would blink unless there's something here. There, so, there's you know, there's that's, no recognized that's me there's no recognized reason at this time why this equipment blinks. But Rick, like I said, over 25 years doing this show, and I have seen no evidence whatsoever to substantiate any claim that these these so-called ghostbusters are making none <laughs> well i've worked with many so i'm going i'm just going to leave it at that <laughs> okay all right uh rick uh, what what are you going to be doing in the future my friend because we uh, we're coming down to the final well, minutes of this hour well I, i'm leaving here and going to work I'm, I'm getting ready to leave to go with to work with some paranormal ghost hunters no i'm kidding you <laughs> Uh, I, I've got, uh, actually I've got, I, I will share that I'm, I'm very excited to share the books that you mentioned earlier, where they're getting ready to go into their second edition. Excellent. They'll be available in the next few weeks. And, uh, in fact, they're going international now and, and I'm excited about that. So, uh, I'm trying, I'm continuing to travel all over the country. I'm leaving this weekend. I'll be up and around the Chicago, Illinois area and, uh, you know, I'm traveling all over the country, getting to meet many, many new friends. And, uh, just, uh, continuing, there's just continuing new, we got a new project coming up, uh, next new project we're working on for next year. I think it's going to be exciting. It's going to be events, the event type thing. Mm -hmm. And then we're also, Rob, we're going to, uh, we're working on some television things as you know, that's something that's kind of ongoing as well. So, but the best way to find out what's happening with me is become my friend, my Facebook friend, which you and I are, Rob. Yes, so, we are. You know, we're friends on Facebook and and uh, and, and in and, real uh, life. Yeah. My, yes, absolutely, yeah. we're a lot in real life. Even though you're younger than me, but that's okay. <laughs> and and <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, I, I'm uh, I'm I'm like I said, uh, there's so many so many exciting things. Just go to my website, mm -hmm. and right there you'll find out. Go to Facebook because we keep informed there so and uh you know always always i always look forward i say this every year i always look forward when i get we'll get our correspondence from 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 you and from your team and saying rick it's time it's time to return and visit with us yeah. and it's like all right it's time you know, all I'm right excited about it rick hayes my good friend take care of yourself rick keep the great work up you're doing a lot of good with a lot of people and that's what makes you the kind of special guy that we love here on the X Zone. So until then my friend, take Thank care you. of yourself. And Thank uh you. watch out for those ghosts, huh? I will do. <laughs> Attaboy. Rick Hayes has been my guest this hour, www.lifesgift.com on Facebook forward slash Rick Hayes Life's Gift and on Twitter, Life's Gift One. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> 